Hello there, welcome back to the Agassino Zinger channel, also known as the Agassino Zinger show, and this is a special pre-recorded version of the random show. What we're going to be doing today is reviewing live Brendan's new special, The Gringo Pappy. Now I'm going to watch it for the first time, all in full. I'm going to cut out all the unnecessary bits and hopefully upload it as something equivalent to like a 15 minute video. That's what I'm hoping to do. So I'm going to watch it all the way through. But what you'll see is an edited version of my reactions to some of the jokes and some of the things that I'm kind of highlighting as I go through it. It's the first run through. So don't be too mean. All right. And I'm doing this through a flipping crappy. What you will call it? You know, one of these cabled microphone thingies. Hopefully the sound's okay and it's not too bad. And if it is too bad, then too bad. You know what I mean. You know what I bloody mean. Let's bloody go. First of all, I hate that song. Change it, as Chris Elliott would say. The song is absolutely trinity dash. Hearing flipping, um, what's that? Is that Chin's kind of R&B croning in the background there? It's horrendous. My man can't sing. I know I can't, but I definitely know when I can hear someone that cannot sing. And whoever that is rapping as well, like, honestly, throw yourself out of a window, mate. That's a white shirt there from Brendan. All right, give up. All right, she's ready to go. Yo, my man's a full-blown alcoholic now, isn't it? Sipping on the whiskey straight up onto the stage, filming a special. This is what, the first of five tapings? Or maybe the second? I don't know which one it was, but allegedly, supposedly, he'd done five recordings of this show. So what, that's five healthy pours of Tiger Piss whiskey on stage, ready to rock. Maybe it's a good thing to get, get you loosened up so you're ready to tell them jokes, but it's not starting off the best, is it? Nation. What's up, Dallas? Look at you guys. Is it me again? I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best not to stop this too often, but please bear with me. Is this like a common thing for anyone that does stand up or knows anyone who's kind of trying to pursue stand up, maybe semi professionally, professionally, whatever level you guys think you're at? Is this a standard thing that happens when you get on stage that you kind of adopt like this um stage persona like crystalia's got it where he's got this weird kind of like you know almost childlike way that he kind of prance around on the stage and his voice inflection is different too brendan's got this weird thing too where he's kind of sassied up like hey guys it's all kind of sassed up right his chest is up he doesn't really talk or speak this way normally you'd imagine from all the hours of podcasting we've heard him kind of um you know uh, punish us with but it's just a normal thing that comedians do where when you get on stage, you kind of ramp up whatever your personality is or you adopt a completely different one on stage. So to help the jokes land more, I don't know what it is, but I'm not really feeling the whole like, hiya, this kind of, you know, BGL energy. It's not really, I'm not really feeling it, but hey, let's continue. We're only at 38 seconds in, I've already paused it four times. This isn't looking good for you or for me, actually, when it comes to editing this, but whatever, let's run. I'm not used to this. Dallas a little different. There are some ladies in the crowd tonight. I am not used to that. My demo, 18 to 36 bros. That's, that's what I specialize in. It's a real cock fest usually at these things. <laughs> I don't mind it though. I'm the bro whisperer. That's what they call me. <laughs> are we vaccinated up in here, Dallas? Everybody vaccinated? Dicey, dicey. I love you, Texas. That's how it is. I love it. I love it. He said, you know, that's that like Leo DiCaprio me, isn't it? He said the word. He did the thing. He did the thing again. The dicey, dicey thing. So far, no jokes. Just funny statements, I guess. Let's continue. There's always one guy. No fucking way, bro. That needle's not touching this fucking temple, daddy. <laughs> As he says, he's taking a nacho, dipping in nacho cheese. For <laughs> oh, my bad, Mr. Whole Foods, my bad. <laughs> yeah, whatever you wanna do, man. I just... 
this whole vaccination stuff, I'm not anti-vax, man, I'm vaccinated, but it's, uh, it's all in their marketing. They fucked this whole thing up in their marketing. Without Operation Warp Speed, when they launched that, remember they're trying to get everybody get vaccinated? And they're like, yeah, go. Hold on, I don't know, I'm going to stop it too many times, but what's this, like, stance that's being, like, I'm pro vaccination No, you're not. We all know you you aren't. Like, didn't didn't his entire crew like um contaminate some place? Where was it? Was it Texas? Was it Texas or somewhere else? They went on tour somewhere. And literally like everyone in the crew had it. He tried to pretend like he didn't give it to people. Chin got it three times because of him or something. You know, when when the pandemic was hot, <laughs> this man and people's bodies <laughs> were still no body buried in the ground. This man was out on tour continuously. Through the entirety of the pandemic now say what you want you know maybe the whole thing was a fluke and not fluke so the whole thing was a hoax and they over blew the um, you know the severity of it whatever it may be but at the time when we were all panicking and worried my man was thinking he was an essential worker because he had to get on stage and tell these type of jokes so this idea that he's somehow pro vaccinations is not true he was just too pussy to kind of come out and really stand with it and say hey i'm anti-vax fuck this this is a lab leak this is a thing created by the chinese government to you know mind control us whatever it may be called population control um whatever right he was too pussy to say that kind of thing and come out with the real conspiracy take so he kind of just let he was kind of you know i don't know b i don't know that kind of all that stuff kind of say what he wanted to say but you're not pro vaccinations we, we know you're not <laughs> it just is what it is isn't it don't be, if anything that would actually be a funnier joke come out and just go straight for it and be like you know what fuck that vaccine fuck covid i was out and told my boys all the way through i don't care about this shit this shit's some pushy shit you know i played football i got hit in the head you know i got hit in the face or punched in the face with ufc i've, I've gone through worse things i'm not about to stay home like a bitch you know that come out like that Instead of just, you know, doing this whole, like, fake, oh, no, I'm with you guys. We're in this together. All right. Go to Krispy Kreme, buy a dozen donuts, get vaccinated. Like, <laughs> the fuck? That makes sense. <laughs> Fat people are like, hell yeah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> it was so confusing. I remember I called my mom. I was like, hey, mama, are you, uh, are you getting vaccinated? She's all... I wasn't, and then, you know, I love donuts, and fucking... <laughs> the remember the first dumbass that messed it all up for everybody, scared the shit out of from, from getting vaccinated? Remember that idiot? He was all over the news stations, the first moron to get that Johnson & Johnson. Right? Clearly a meth addict. They just, nobody checked into his background. Remember that? They put him on the news, he's sweaty as shit. He was on all the major broadcasts, he's like, Holy shit, dude! <laughs> yeah, I got it done. I got that Johnson Johnson, bro. I don't feel good, bro. I can't stop sweating, bro. I feel like I'm growing wings. Bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay low for a little bit on the vaccination. I'm just gonna. Remember that moron? Yo, we're telling COVID vaccination jokes in 2022. Cool. It's all in marketing, man. Like, they need to hire some just a dime piece actor we've never heard of. Just blast them all over the news, right? Just somebody who's fine. Get them on there and just put them all over the news, all over the nation. Like, I, yeah, dude, I got the Johnson Johnson. I feel pretty good. I feel great, actually. If I'm being honest, one side effect, if I, I just want to be up front with everybody. Goddamn dick's down to here. Just <laughs> fucking... You'd have a line of bros at CVS just like, just trying to do my part, man. Just <laughs> it's good to be in Dallas, man. You guys do it right. It's good to be in Dallas. I know. Yeah. Yep. Was that the biggest applause that he got for shouting at the place that he's doing comedy at? Yo, that set as well, man. The, the fall from grace from doing this, and I'm gonna put up the picture of the Showtime special, to this, Showtime special, to this, Showtime special, to this, is major, in it. If this is what better when yourself looks like, <laughs> I don't know, man. You know what this reminds me of, actually, just a quickly note. This is one of those sets that you put up, you know what Schultz does, where he kind of uses these, um, he, he does like those crowd work things, and that, I don't think that's what he does in terms of his entire set. I don't think he just gets up on stage and does crowd work everywhere he goes, because that would be insane. That's probably really difficult to do, because essentially you're, you're riffing. 
you know, or you're improvising every single time you go on stage. You've got to have some sort of solid half an hour, an hour type set. I would imagine so, but who knows? Maybe he's that much of a beast. But for the most part, Schultz puts up all these kind of, you know, crowd work sets on YouTube. And some of them are like 40 minutes, They're even longer than this special that he's got, Brent Brennan, supposedly. And then Mark Norman does the same thing with his kind of rooftop gigs that he was doing during the pandemic and whatnot and outdoor shows. This should be just a throwaway you just put up just so you can kind of have some content out there. The fact that this is like a special, and the thing is that's funny about it, it's not even, my G, it's 25 minutes. I just clocked. It's not even half an hour. It's meant to be a 30 minute special and he couldn't do half an hour. He couldn't do 29.59. He couldn't do 30 minutes and two seconds or one minute sorry it had to be 2558 and this is including that crappy song intro with chin and whoever was rapping on there for a minute and a half so this is what 24 minutes and whatever else is on the outro god damn it brandon ay 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 there's a reason I decided to shoot my special here man you guys just give me so much love I absolutely love Texas man I uh yeah, yeah thank you thank you I, uh, I haven't touched a mask since I touched down. It is fantastic. <laughs> LA is not like this, y'all. LA is North Korea with a beach. <laughs> but they give us Wi-Fi, so that's cool. Wow. They're talking about locking us back down. I can't go through another lockdown. Straight up, my, the shop household barely made it through the last one. We eat our way out of that last one. We did not do well with it. Also, Dallas, my lockdown's different. I got a five-year-old and two-year-old. Parents know what I'm talking about. I would rather do anything else than be locked down with those fucking demons 24 seven. <laughs> we're not even locked down. My girl was fighting with me the other week. We get locked down, we're fucked. She was fighting with me. Fighting, nye, nye, Fauci, nye, nye, Delta, nye, nye, Mass. Nye, nye. What are we gonna do? I was thinking myself, oh my God, my life would be so much easier if I was just gay as shit. <laughs> if I was locked down with the bros, Dallas? Quarantine with the homies? You know how much more fun we would have? Oh my God, dude. We'd like play video games all day. We'd work out. At night, we'd fuck each other. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was all, what the fuck? No. I, I thought we were gonna play video games, bro. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> I love that. No, fuck no, I'm not into that, dude. I'm not. I don't want to be locked down with you anymore. I just, <laughs> what are you going to do, bro? You're bored. <laughs> One can dream, Dallas. One can dream. I never thought I'd say this to a live audience. One thing that I'm grateful for, for the, the governor of California, Governor Newsom, for locking us down for an entire year and ruining small businesses because I wouldn't have realized this unless I was locked down with my family for an entire year. I realized my girl's not cool. She's just not... <laughs> she's not a friendly human being. I, uh... I married a goddamn rattlesnake. <laughs> she's like, this is my girl. This is my girl, man. This is what I'm dealing with. Yo, at, listen, LA's different than Texas. My, they just opened up my son's school last week. He hasn't been school in a fucking year. They just opened it last week, first day of kindergarten. So I got him his first day outfit, looking all fucking fly, dope kicks, giant backpack, backwards hat, looks just like me. I'm walking up for school. I'm like, dude, it's about to be lit as fuck. <laughs> all his little friends are out front in the first day outfits. I'm like, oh my God, you guys are cute as shit. I need a document. Just quickly to note, is it me or is he just rushing through his entire set? This could probably be 30 minutes if he just took some time and some breaths and just observe the moment, soak it in a little bit. Let the, let the kind of the jokes rise to a, some sort of crescendo wall and then start again, maybe. Or maybe I'm just too used to seeing high level people who do that quite often, because maybe when you're comfortable doing it, you're really good, you can kind of fuck around. Because maybe that's what he's doing. He's kind of trying to pretend like he's confident by putting his arm on the flipping, on the mic stand and kind of fucking around with the audience in between doing the already pre-written set. I don't really know, but it just feels like he's really, really rushing through the entirety of the set, which doesn't really help the jokes. Again, I don't find any of this funny. I've not really laughed yet, and it's six minutes in. But maybe there is something there, but my man's just 
rambly, like machine gun style through the entirety of the thing. And it's like, God damn it, brother, take a breath. And this is coming from me. I talk incredibly fast. One of my main complaints on this channel is that I keep rambling and rambling and don't stop and don't play videos as I'm doing just right now. But God damn it, man. At this AOT, get tight. There's a bunch of you squeezing tight. Daddy's gonna take a picture. Ready? Cheese on three. Ready? One, two, three. Cheese. They're all cheese. I take out my phone. I'm all hell yeah. I snap a pic. I text it to my girl. She gets it. She looks at it. She goes, crop out the uglies. Resend. <laughs> What? Excuse me? I said, you're in a group chat to other parents, dumbass. <laughs> savage, y'all, savage. That was funny. I married a Mexican, y'all. I married a Mexican. <laughs> I thought you would like that. Listen, <laughs> listen, da listen. I thought you guys would enjoy that. Listen, Dallas, Dallas. I don't mean like Taco Bell Mexican. No, 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 no. I'm talking Guadalajara. Born and raised. Came to the States 10 years ago. Illegally Mexican. The real deal, Holyfield, y'all. This shit is... I did a lot of white girls, big titties and flat asses before her and it just never worked out for me. It just would never work out. And I'll never forget this, one of my boys goes, dude, dude, papi, what are you doing, bro? Get with a Latina, bro. You know why? Because they're fun and they're spicy. No doubt, definitely spicy. Girl spicy, right? Girl spicy. You know what spicy means? They're assholes. That's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't even commit to it. Like, you know, if you really want to commit to that kind of joke, you just say, you know what? You know, you know what spicy means, right? Spicy is just Spanish for cunt, right? That's what battle axe, uh, what you call it, ball and chain, no fun. Like, you'd have to commit to it and really kind of silence the room. Don't get me wrong, maybe that was too harsh, but you know what I mean. But just like, you know, spicy means bad person. What do they say? Bad person, don't, not nice, whatever. It's just, eh? All right, I guess. Sorry, man. <laughs> and then apologizing. Dude, when we first got together, she was cooking authentic Mexican food seven nights a week. I'm not used to this. I was like, what? Fajitas every Wednesday? Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, dumbass. Not fajitas every Wednesday. Real Mexican dishes, y'all. Real shit from the motherland. I'm talking huevos ranchos. <laughs> Carne asada. Pico de gallo. <laughs> and my favorite, chili, ah. <laughs> nah, look, I'm no stand-up comedian. I don't profess to be one. Never written a joke in my entire life. Don't have any ambition to get on a stage and tell any jokes. But that that isn't a joke. Just saying words in a funny tone isn't a joke. That's a podcast. <laughs> isn't that just a podcast? That's not a joke. That's not what a stand-up material is. Stand-up material should be like what? Set up punchline, what is it? Whatever that, that that thing is, set up punchline, um, whatever the word is. I don't know what, what the end bit comes, but it's there's a structure to it, right? Or sometimes it's a misdirection. What is this? This is why I've always said I'd never understood why he wants even to pursue a stand up comedy career. Like, why not just for all the podcasts he has and all the fans he has and stuff, and the money he makes from this sort of stuff, and the fact that. For the most part, you don't really get the feeling that my man cares about being funny. He just cares about, you know, being famous and well known in his niche, which is all well and good. Everyone has their own goals. You know, Bert Crash is a good example. He's really funny, but he cares about being famous more so than, you know, anything else, which is nice. But, you know, he happens to also be like a supreme joke writer. But I think in general, wouldn't Brendan be better off served if he just concentrated on making a T5K live show that works like this? Where maybe he can come, where maybe Chen and whoever raps on this song at the beginning of the special will come out and do a little set. He gets Chappelle to do some backflips and talk about bands that he's into. He gets Brian Callen to talk about philosophy and whatever else is going to let <laughs> make this, the room go to sleep. Then he comes out and kind of closes it with like a closer, maybe an interesting fact he knows or whatever, just something. Kick review, whatever. Just something that incorporates this. So it's not like a traditional stand up show, it's sort of like a traveling circus act thing that he takes around places because this stand-up career bro i don't think this is for him man this is terrible
And again, it's a slight improvement to the first one. Slight improvement. But this is six years later, I guess, right? Is it six years later? I think it's six years later. And my man isn't that much better, really. And you'd imagine he gets up, what, every weekend? For most weeks, he gets up, minimum. So that's, two, you know, what, how many shows is that? That may be like four shows. So you're doing this, you know, for half an hour. Like, so basically like a total of, what, two hours per, per week for four years. And this is the improvement that we see. God damn it, bro. Every night, though, every night, seven years later, every fucking night. I know I look Latin. There's going to know who I am. She's like, honey, what the fuck is happening right now? Is he not a Puerto Rican shortstop for the Dodgers? What the fuck's happening? <laughs> Dude, I did that 23 and me. I did that shit. You spin the cup, you mail your DNA in. I did that. They sent me to drive mayonnaise back. I am white as shit, Dallas. Yeah. White person handout, page seven, bitch. I need a fucking tater tot once a week. <laughs> Would a fucking hot pocket kill you every now and then? <laughs> every time dinner would come, I'm like, oh, does she really think beans go with every goddamn meal? Is she serious? <laughs> she for real? This is the most hacky shit I've ever seen in my life. And it's not as if, like, they just got together. If this, this, would, this would make more sense if he was, like, a a proper bro like in terms of like white as shit looking wise and also into very caucasian things and then suddenly he happens to like you know get sent on deployment to mexico or he does his first show there and he didn't really know much about the country or it, you know he bumps he, he has he makes a friend who's from there and he meets their, his sister and, and that guy's sister and you know whatever you know that would make more sense if it was somebody who legitimately had no idea about what that culture is but you're from la well you know he's lived in la for the majority of his adult life in some sort of professional capacity he's clearly somebody that's got you know a, you'd say quote unquote urban leanings or taste in terms of the women that he's into he's always talking about girls with big bums and big tits and you know crazy figures so you'd imagine the only ones that would tick his box would be you know latinas and um what you call it and black girls and whatnot right so there is some familiarity you would imagine with that culture and what it's about especially when it comes to the ufc and boxing right mexican you know fighters are legendary for their you know flipping determination will and refusal to quit so and then there's loads of you know incredible legends from that um country there you know none more so than bloody canelo so you'd imagine man the man is used to or is some way familiar with that culture right it, you know again living in la I went to LA only once, you know, a few years back, and I was astounded by the amount of Mexicans I bumped into on a daily basis because we don't have hardly any here in the UK, and they were legitimately everywhere. You couldn't get past them. I think that was about the same time, you know, Donald Trump was doing that whole build a wall thing, and I was just, I was in LA thinking, this doesn't make any sense. How are you going to build a wall when, you know, like over half of the people who work in the service industry or any, you know, industry for that part in the LA are from there? If you build the wall and you get all these people out, you're not going to have a functioning economy, let alone society. So clearly my man's familiar with it. So why is he talking as if like he just started dating her last week? Don't they have two kids? Isn't one like nearly 10 years old? And one's what? Like, I don't know, five, six, I think. I don't know, maybe younger. They've been together for a while. Why are they talking as if like this is a new thing? This is so hacky. It's really weird. Like what next? When he, when he has, like, a black friend that's into reggae, was, is that going to be the next thing now? Reggae guys? Like, oh, my friend DJs, DJ jokes? Oh, my friend's, uh, you know, my friend's a really big comic. You're going to talk about airplanes and, you know, first class and missing your flight stuff? Like, this is hack as hell. Comedy specials are, like, sort... You'd imagine they're kind of like albums, right? Where they're sort of like an encapsulation of what you've been going through as a person. So maybe, like, you know... It, it, it kind of is a summa summation, a conclusion, yeah, so you know, like a rounding up of what you've been going through. So maybe you drop one album or one comedy special at this time and you're going through a divorce. So maybe a lot of the material that you speak up about on stage will be about that, the frictions and your inability to connect with your ex-wife and what drove it to divorce and kind of making a joke out of very serious situ situation. So kind of tap, you know, making humour out of the darkness. Then four years later, you meet a new person. And now you're dating them. Maybe they're really young. So they talk about the age different stuff and da da da. But it's all new and fresh. It's not like this is four years later. Like when he did the first special, he was with this lady that he's with who's from Mexico. Now he's doing this special and he's with the lady he's with when he's, with, you know, who's from Mexico. And suddenly there's this Mexican content. What? And does this sound like a tribute to Mexico or does this sound like him kind of kicking 
kind of being pissed off that his wife <laughs> is really in tune with her culture and wants to hold on to some traditions or whatever it may be or is really patriotic this sounds a bit weird but you know whatever let's play every time they would come like does it ever occur to her maybe brendan's not trying to shit his pants tonight how about that <laughs> fuck Every time dinner would come, my asshole would go like this. Fuck, bro! Fuck, bro! Fuck. He's done that twice. We're dying down here, Bobby! It's so spicy, bro! <laughs> oh, this is trash. God damn. I've never been thicker since I got with a Mexican, man. <laughs> Thick with three fucking C's. Dude, everything they eat, bean cheese, bean Woo! cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. I'm like, what the hell, man? What's and again, I'm not talking from a point of privilege because my enunciation isn't the best or my pronunciation isn't the best. Is it me or is he mispronouncing loads of really weird things? Be not because he can't say the words, but it feels like because he's rushing. He's trying to rush through his sentences or get to the punchline, wherever the punchline is. And then he's messing up words, which then kind of throws you off because when someone, it's like a, it's like a magic trick. When someone fucks up a magic trick, it automatically snaps you out of the illusion that you're going to be, you know, shown magic. So in the same thing's happening here. He's trying his best to get to the punchline, but then he stumbles over his words, which immediately snaps you out at the moment, and you can't help but notice that he stumbled his words before. And of course, like a pro, he has to just keep soldiering on, but it's happened many times now. For half an hour special, tripping over your words is a bit unacceptable, you would imagine, no? Especially if you're filming it five times. You should have this memorised, like, You'd imagine so. Again, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm being unfair and it's really hard to do, but half an hour show that isn't half an hour, it's like 20 minutes, 25 if that, and you're stumbling over your words consistently to the point where you can't even, did he mean to say what he said or did he mean to say what the word was meant, what the word is meant to be? Like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Just going to carb load year round? <laughs> we never tailor off the carbs? That's the game plan? We're all gonna be built like armadillos. <laughs> I got so thick in the pandemic, I, uh, I decided to go on a keto diet. If you know what keto is, keto is a diet where you can't eat Mexican food. That's the diet. <laughs> it's, pr it's pretty easy to stick to, man. Just don't touch a fucking tortilla, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Here's my problem though, here's my problem. Every Friday, my mother-in-law cooks my favorite Mexican food at my house. Lol. She has her own house, but does that mine, it makes no sense. <laughs> so before I started this keto diet, I went up to my girl, I go, hey, you know I love your mom, her food, best in the world. It's my favorite, that's why I'm so fucking fat. Listen, <laughs> do me a favor though, I don't wanna be tempted, I don't want in the house. Do me a favor, tell your mom I'm on keto, can you do that? She goes, why don't you tell her? She speaks English, I went, but she doesn't though, but she doesn't. <laughs> You keep saying that, and she clearly fucking doesn't. <laughs> Do me a solid, tell her I'm on fucking keto, okay? Eight weeks goes by, your boy hasn't touched a fucking tortilla. Nothing. I walk in the house last Friday, show enough, there's a fucking fiesta! Of my favorite food! You know how, like, Theo Vaughn can't bring out cocaine? <laughs> You know how like he struggles with cocaine? Like if there was cocaine on the table right now, he'd fucking snort it from right field, you feel me? God bless him, I love that fucking dude. That's I am with fucking Pozole. I see it, dude. I will fucking take it to the snout. I can't be around it. I see it, I eat it. So I walked in, I go, mama, mama. The audio is really fucked. And again, this is coming from somebody who can't even stream correctly. Sometimes my recordings are way off. The levels are where they're not. Maybe this recording is even pretty crap levels wise. I'm not really too sure. But god damn it, man. The recording keeps going up and down. Like, who is it edited by? Who is it? Like, this is a brutal watch, man. Come on, Agostino. 13 more minutes to go. Uh, you know, I love Mama. What are you doing? I know you know. I'm on keto. I know, I know you know. Somebody told you I'm on keto. She goes, Mijo, Mijo, bueno, andale, andale, Mijo, Mijo. Cabron, cabron, look, cabron, cabron, cabron. She grabs this tray, she goes, Cabron, Cabron, look, taquitos. It's keto, bitch! <laughs> ah.
I'm just gonna stay thick, y'all. It's my DNA. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Is it safe to say this might do more damage than good? Overall. Because the first one was so long ago in internet years that you might forget about it. And nowadays, unless you really want to watch it, are you really going to go out of your way to watch a Brendan Short special from however many moons ago on Showtime? You're not really, are you? If you haven't got around to watching The Sopranos yet, you haven't got around to finishing Game of Thrones, you're still struggling to get through Yellowstone like I am. Um, you maybe wasn't the biggest fan of Breaking Bad. You popped in and out of Ozarks. You've seen, you know, people talking about Moon Knight, but you don't care to get interested, involved in that one. You've heard about Gamora, but you've seen Italian with subtitles and you can't be bothered. There's so many things out there that people haven't really finished or got through. Even movies, right? The Batman was maybe the most recent movie that I legitimately bought a ticket to to go and watch. Most things people just, you know, people can't be bothered. It feels like, because that's why, you know, you see for the most part, box office sales are, ticket sales are down across the board apart from spider-man that came out just blew everything out of the water but for the most part people just kind of yeah they'll consume it in clips look at interviews interviews nowadays people just you know if there's a controversial thing said in the interview that clip will go viral but no one watched the entire thing they'll just yeah i saw the interview but what did you see the clip or the interview no i saw the clip okay cool so that means most likely the majority of people probably didn't see this first special this, this first special right um you'd be surprised so you'd imagine you could, it could be argued, right? You could say, okay, cool. That first one was a bit of a one-off. I accepted this stand-up special one. I probably shouldn't have accepted it from Showtime, even though, you know, I think overall it was a probably good idea for, for him to accept it because it allowed him to then become the face of MMA, you know, boxing and whatnot and UFC with Showtime, which was obviously something that helped in terms of his overall goals and plans he wanted to do. Then he obviously, I'm assuming, used that money to then parlay into other things that he was doing. Maybe that's the reason why he even started King of the Sting, because of the check he was getting from Showtime. Who knows? But regardless, you would imagine the second special would be a chance for you to reset the palette to show everybody, okay, cool. Forget that first one. That was a dud. This is what I'm really about. Four years in, six years in, however long he's been doing it. Here's me. But instead we get this. He probably enjoys the like the fact that he's on stage to be able to drink whiskey and talk as opposed to being funny. This isn't, I don't know, is, is it funny or am I tripping? I just feel like this is like dead. Man. And I can't get past the fact that it's not even 30 minutes. And I'm already struggling to get through it. Oh, the other thing you should know about Dana Maxine, nobody told me this. There's me flaming hot Cheetos all over your house. <laughs> they love them. They love them. It's like catnip for Mexicans. They love them. <laughs> I'm only... By the way, I, as somebody that, again, I live in the UK, I don't know many, many Mexicans personally. Is the whole flaming hot Cheetos thing real? Is that true? Is that legit? Or is this just a... A stereotype and an exaggeration that doesn't really hold truth in the real world because i don't know i've never heard this thing that only mexicans eat flaming hot cheetos i've seen people online doing recipes with flaming hot cheetos who covered the entire spectrum of races and whatnot and nationalities it's not i don't necessarily see it as just a mexican thing maybe i'm i'm, I'm looking too much into it, i don't know but if you know if you know more in, let me know in the comments please person in my house who don't speak spanish I feel like a refugee in my own goddamn house. <laughs> my white friends learned a day of Latino before go, dude, just fucking learn Spanish, put a little effort in, learn Spanish. How hard can it be? I'm all, bitch, I am 38. <laughs> I struggle with English at times. <laughs> you know what it feels like that my five-year-old son roll up on his bike and talk shit to me in Spanish? You know what that feels like? As a father, you know what that feels like? I don't have a clue what he's talking about. I don't have a clue. I thought puto meant dude for the longest time. <laughs> I dropped him out of school last week. I was all, later puto! <laughs> Teacher was like, what the fuck? I'm all, puto, puto. Uh -oh. Puto? <laughs> One of the many things I love about the Mexican culture is, uh, I, and I do love your culture, man. One of the many things I love about it is you guys always have something to celebrate. 
Every week you have something to celebrate. As a white person, my dad's like, oh, your birthday, motherfucker. I'm like, all right, once a year, be cool, dad, be cool. Not Mexicans, every week something's popping. Last week, some girl turned 15. Not, not even related to us. Threw the party at my house. <laughs> Apparently, the Mexican culture turned 15 is a big deal. White people, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> these Mexicans gave all the fuck, yeah. I walk in the house, these Mexicans give a fuck about social distancing. There was a mask in sight. I walk in the house, there's a mariachi band. <laughs> They're beating the shit out of this pinata. There's flaming hot Cheetos spraying over the goddamn living room. I walk in, I look at my girl, Jesus Christ, quite the party. What are we celebrating? What, she getting to Harvard early? What's going on here? She goes, nope, just turned 15. I went, fuck yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. The other thing I love about the Mexican culture is you guys stick together. You guys are so loyal to each other. You fucking have each other's back, and I love that. White people, we're not like that, are we? As soon as we turn 16, we're all fucking see you, Peter and Debbie, and fucking. <laughs> Those are my real parent names. <laughs>
no, you don't fit. She goes, bueno, we fit. I went, please don't do this. I promise you, you do not fucking fit. Sure enough, we fit, y'all. We fucking fit, man, yeah. Crazy, yeah. Two of them were hanging off the spoiler, didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Forget how I'm gonna wrap up this Mexican bait going hard on my family. Oh, I know, me and my girl, we're not doing well. That's right, we're not doing well. So she wanted to go to couples therapy. I'm like, all right, good luck finding one during the middle of pandemic. She found one, man. She fucking found one. Yeah, two-star review, but we're going. So we're driving a couples therapy. She's crying just because she ran a Flaming Hot Cheetos. I'm crying just because my life currently. <laughs> and we pull up to the, we pull up this brick building, this small brick building. I've never seen some shit like this. Small little brick building. We pull up to and this therapist has her name plaster on the side of the goddamn building. Giant red neon letters, just fucking zzzz. It says, Dr. Rodriguez. I get out, I'm like, well, it's an away game for your boy, isn't it? Okay, that is 18 minutes into a 25 minutes special. And I thought that was the best joke. And you know why that might be the best joke? Because this is actually true. This might be actually rooted in some truth. This might be something that's actually painful. The fact that he legitimately had to go through couples therapy at some point in his relationship. Now this could have happened seven years ago for all we know, but this is definitely a pain point that he had to go through because you would imagine to get to the point of doing couples therapy, you'd have to, you know, there's something that's happened in between to kind of cause you to go and, you know, seek the advice of a therapist in order to kind of mend your relationship. You would imagine that would be the case. But this is definitely the funniest joke I've heard in this special. And it's 18 minutes in. This is the funniest thing he said. Wow. We did not go in there, Dallas. We did not. We're looking for a Dr. Robinson, maybe Dr. Allen at this point, you feel me? Or home field of how how is my man struggling to say Robertson and Allen? And is it therapy or therapist? Or is that just an accent from where he's from? I just can't get past the lack of pronunciation. This is really, really interesting, isn't it? Interesting, interesting. A stand-up comedian who legitimately sounds like he's got marbles in his mouth when he's speaking. Do you think he goes up on stage with nicotine pouches? That would be insane, isn't it? It's like doing stand-up comedy with a with a fucking grill on a pound thing. Wow. <laughs> I moved in a house recently, moved in a new house in LA. Whenever you move in a new house, it's always weird, but it's even weirder in the middle of pandemic. So we moved in a new house, my girl goes, Papi, Papi, I've seen the neighbors. They're pretty old, They're pretty, let's play it safe. They're probably COVID conscious. Why don't you just go over and induce yourself, right? I'll bake some Mexican cookies and you go over there. I'm like, what the fuck's Mexican cookie? What are you talking about? It's like a chocolate chip with salsa all over it? What are you talking about? What are you... I'm like, that's a terrible idea. Just, I'll take it, I'll figure it out. So first night in the new house, everything's all good, man. Everything's all good. Kids fall asleep, girl falls asleep, I fall asleep, all good. 3 a.m. on the dot, I'm woken up to I'm like, what the fuck is howling outside? Whatever. Next day, I install the security stuff, cameras, the ring stuff, all that, all that stuff, the doorbell, all the ring security stuff, all good. Fall asleep that night. Kids asleep, girls asleep, I fall asleep. 3 a.m. on the goddamn dot, I'm woken up again. I'm like, there's a goddamn gargoyle outside my window, dude. <laughs> what I didn't know about this Ring app, you download the app, there's an entire community of people just snitching on each other. <laughs> it's like Takashi69 made this app. It's fantastic. I scroll, listen, dude. I scroll that app for hours looking for real crime. I'm like, come on, dude. Somebody fucking kill somebody for God's sakes. <laughs> You know how much first 48 I watch? I'm like, we got 48 hours, bro. Let's get going here, man. <laughs> what I didn't know is you can narrow it down to your hood. You can narrow it, narrow it down right to your neighborhood. It's dope. You can narrow it right down. So I'm like, ooh, let's see what's popping this new neighborhood of mine. <laughs> Two doors down, Jerry goes, hey, man, this mountain lion ate my goddamn dogs. <laughs> Somebody needs to do something. Jesus Christ. I'm like, that is not good. Diane, right next door to me, goes, yeah, I used to be the fucking cat lady. Not anymore. That mountain lion ripped my goddamn cat's head off and ate all of them. My kids saw it from the window. We can't sleep at night. Somebody needs to do something. Like, this is not good. 
Then David, right next door to me, David goes, yeah, the same mountain lion stole my Amazon package. I'm all, all right, dude. <laughs> but that gives me the idea. I'm like, ooh, I know how I'm going to introduce myself to the new neighbors. I'm going to take care of this little kitty problem for them. That's what I'm going to do. This is going to be easy work. But I need to buy a gun. I need to go buy a gun. I've never, listen, Dallas, I've never owned a gun, never shot a gun, played Call of Duty twice, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I go into my local LA gun store. Again, I've never bought a gun. I got so hustled in there. I got so bamboozled, dude. Uh, listen, I've never shot a gun. I walked out with an AR-15, <laughs> like the red laser thing on top of it. I walked out with the Zero Dark Thirty Navy SEAL night vision helmet. <laughs> what? I was like, dude, 19 grand for all this? Hell yeah, bro. Fuck yeah, it's a steal, bro. No, I'll wear it out. No, I can see everything, dude. That cat's fucked, bro. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. And I'll let you know, man. Yeah, thank you. Dude, killer deal. <laughs> So I get home, I'm, listen, I've never owned a gun. I'm hyped up, I'm loading the gun. I get my fucking night vision on. I'm like, this shit is fucking dope, dude. In my head, I'm like, right, this is this how I'm envisioning this, right? That cat shows up at 3 a.m. every night, right? So I'll be sleeping, it's 3 a.m., it's late. I'll be sleeping, right? I'm here, wow, I'm gonna fucking pop out of bed, right? I'm gonna fucking, yeah! And then I always have my Uggs bedside, right? My Uggs will be right there. <laughs> be cool, Tom Brady wears Uggs, so I'll fucking... I'll, I'll, put, I'll slide my Uggs on, right? I'll have my AR-15 like this. I have my Zero Dark 30 night vision like this. My big dick's right there still. So I'm like... <laughs> I don't know why I threw that in, but be cool. So I'm fucking... <laughs> She's so offended, so I'm here, right? This is brutal, So I'm here, and I catch him like, round, like, enough's enough, dude. I'm gonna slide that sliding door open, like, yeah. And every video I've ever seen, like, online, those mountain lions have, like, those soft, wet, black noses. I'm going to punt them right in that goddamn nose. Fucking... And then... I'm looking at my ring camera and go, World Star! Your boy's going to go viral. It's going to be lit as fuck. I can't wait, man. So that next night, right? I'm pacing back and forth. My girl's like, go to bed. I'm all, shut up, bitch. I'm fucking here. <laughs> Again, I got my Ugg boots on. I got my Air 15. I got my Zero Dark 30 night vision on, right? Still got the big dick. Sorry. I'm fucking here. I, I got to stick with it, right? So I'm here. I'm, pacing, I'm looking at the clock. It's all 2.58. I'm all, pray to God this cat shows up, bro. It's 2.50 now, I'm like, last day on earth for you, kitty. 3 a.m. hits, I hear, Row! I'm all, showtime. I slide that glass door open, I'm all, yeah! Here's the thing, Dallas, I, uh, I've never seen a mountain lion in person before. In my head, I was thinking like a small type of bobcat type of thing, right? Like. The gun's a little extreme. Probably don't need the Navy SEAL night vision, dude. Like, can probably grab it by the scruff of the neck and be like, enough's enough, kitty. <laughs> well, no, dumbass. It's a line of the mountains, dude. It's fucking... This thing was Mufasa. Fucking... Uh, it's like this mountain lion ate Joe Rogan's trash. This thing was fucking... <laughs> The name drop, gross, gross. Oh. Oh, I panicked, uh, dude. I panicked. I went, oh shit! I slammed the door, dude. I threw my AR-15 like this. My, f I fucking threw my night vision. I'm not even left-handed. I was like, oh my god. Still got my Ugg boots, still got the big dick. Not a big deal. <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I got in that ring app the next morning and went, yo, we got a mountain lion problem, y'all. <laughs> Dallas, that's I'm my time. Gay. I love you guys. I'ma beat that shit up for that girl on some fighter and kid shit. I'm getting gains and I'm putting up numbers. I swear I'm a mathematician. They don't wait, class like who they is don't this? wait for the game, yeah.
yeah, you know. And of course, he copied the flipping Dave Chappelle outro stuff. Of course, that was brutal to watch. I don't have many words to surmise it. It was maybe one of the worst things I've ever watched in a very, very long time. <clears throat> I don't know what to say, bruv. <laughs> I don't know what to say. If anything, like I said, it, it gives me hope in whatever artistic pursuit that I'm pursuing at the moment now. When it comes to my DJing stuff, when it comes to doing this podcast or doing this YouTube channel, whatever it may be that I'm doing that at the moment. When it comes to me writing, when it comes to me taking pictures and photography stuff with my, you know, crappy little 30 minute, 35 millimeter film camera. It gives me hope that if my man can, you know, drive expensive cars and live in a mansion in LA, you know, with pretty mediocre work, then I think I got a fair chance of doing it too. Because wow, man, that was, um, yeah, that was something, innit? Um, uh, yeah, 25 minutes of my life I would never get back. But yeah, that was the Gringo Peppy review courtesy of me, Agassino Zinger. Oh, if you enjoyed the special, if you enjoyed what I had to say, actually, make sure you thumbs up and make sure you leave me a comment. And if you didn't, thumbs down anyway. I don't blame you if you do thumbs down. I really don't blame you if you dislike because that was horrible to watch. And I guess I'll see you guys again very soon. Holy shit.